hey, hey, welcome back to the Rebellion. This is Banks and Shane, your place for peace, liberty, free markets. How are we doing, Banksy? Doing really well. We've got a little bit of a new angle. We've been invited to appear on another podcast. I know you went on a bunch of podcasts during your campaign, and uh, you recently went on Cannabis Heals Me podcast the other day, which yeah. was really cool, by the way. I, I haven't told you that. Oh, thanks. Um, but uh, we are both going on the Brian Nichols Show. Yeah. Brian uh, interviewed me shortly after the campaign. Oh, after. Yeah, short, okay. shortly after. Uh, it was all said and done, and it was it was a fun interview. Brian's got a, a ton of energy. and He's uh, got that announcer voice. Apparently, he did radio before yeah. uh, when he was in college or something. Yeah. And uh, like it will it will wake you up. Like That's the type of thing in the morning. You're, you're commuting. You better have you're your tired. cup of coffee. <laughs> like there, there, there wasn't <laughs> enough coffee left. You listen to Brian Nichols. And uh, you will be pumped because yeah. not only does he have that energetic voice, he puts in that liberty in there. And that, that's good stuff. He's your shot of, shot of espresso when you don't even need one, or, or I should say when you haven't had one yet. Like he, he's de- he's definitely he's that high energy guy that is all about liberty, man. Good questions. Um, he's got a plan for, for for where he wants to go with the questions too. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, so um, what we're going to do is we are going to air that uh, segment here on The Rebellion. And uh, thanks. Anything before we get started? Anything else? No. I think after this, we'll, we'll have some podcast talk. Yeah. Well, we hope you enjoy the Brian Nichols Show here on The Rebellion. All right. And with that, on The Brian Nichols Show, Banks Wise and Shane Hazel from The Rebellion. Welcome to The Brian Nichols Show. Thanks, Brian. Pleasure to be here, man. Well, I, I should say, it's great to be back. Yeah, yeah. Well, so for the folks who who didn't get the chance to listen to the uh, the amazingly fun and uh, always thought provoking episode here in the Brian Nichols Show, we had Shane Hazel join us. Oh my God, Shane! What way back in the uh, the summer of 2018? Uh, and this was uh, yeah, he was just a, wrapped up a a pretty intense congressional campaign at that point. Yeah, r- racked up or wrapped up or whatever it was. We were uh, yeah, we were kind of I guess licking our wounds. And I, Banks and I had already had the the thoughts and we had talked on the campaign trail about starting the rebellion. I think I told you, I said, you know, you haven't heard the last of us. You're probably going to hear us uh, pretty soon. A lot more than most people know. So yeah, it's uh it's, it's been a heck of a, a heck of a year already almost. And so folks who don't know, so Shane is uh, he's formerly a candidate in, in uh, Georgia for the U S house and uh, banks, correct me if I'm wrong. You were his, his consigliere as the campaign manager. That that's correct. Yeah, Shane and I met about it's going to be two years now, and uh, sat down, and uh, I knew I was going to run his campaign the first the first meeting I had with him. It was it was love at first sight, Brian. <laughs> there there are there are worse marriages made in heaven, and, and I think you guys are pretty well established now, not only for your your campaign that you guys ran together, but also now obviously a part of the rebellion. So, uh, Shane, when you and I left things off, you'd mentioned like you just you just did there that you, you'd mentioned things weren't uh, you know things weren't done with you you two, and uh, you'd hinted that you might be looking in something in the podcast space and lo and behold here we are uh you know about a year later and you guys have launched a very successful podcast down in georgia called the rebellion so jump ball who who is the rebellion what do you guys talk about and what makes you guys so unique in the uh, the political talk podcasting space boy uh unique uh, you got a guy named banks on the show that, that, <laughs> that you know borders on artificial intelligence because he's that damn smart and i think uh, the most unique part is how the the uh, the idea started. Uh, Shane and I would go door to door for for months during the campaign, and Shane was like, "Hey, Banks, it's like fun. We just get to walk and talk about politics and culture, and uh, we should do this." And and Banks was like, uh, "No, that's never happening, Shane." And uh, over months and months of walking door to door and thousands of miles and um, laughs. That, that lots was, of laughs. That, I mean, our, our chemistry works, but I told him no at least a hundred times. It was it was it was hysterical because we would we would literally knock on a door, we would goof around until the point that they came to the door. We would talk, have whatever conversation we needed to have with those people, and as soon as the damn door closed, we were back laughing again. I mean, it wasn't. I'm not going to tell you like every time, but I'm telling you probably 95 plus percent of the time. We would joke so much in between doors, and I mean, what did we hit sixteen thousand doors? We did. I mean, that's that's, that's a lot of that's talk. That's impressive. That's a lot of talk, 
and it's a lot of laughs. And I mean, we would joke about everything. That's where, that's where I got to know banks, you know, like your ups and downs in, in terms of a political type of season, you know, it's grueling, especially when you're tracking those kind of miles. And that's the thing is we would just find neighborhoods that we could knock out tons and tons of houses. You know, we, we had an, an app where we were looking at the software and going, Hey, this is a very, you know, what, what I'll call a target rich environment. And so he was like, Hey man, let's, let's go do this. And so bam, 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 you know, knock on the door, talk, 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 and then talk to each other. And it was just one of those things where I was like, God, man, if we can do this in between doors and we can have these conversations, which I think most people aren't, you know, aren't having and do it in such a fun and in a lighthearted way, why don't we do this and make some money and change some culture? Like let's, let's propel this into the atmosphere you know, more than, more than any congressional runs ever going to do. Well, I mean, what you guys are doing is, is not only important for the greater movement, I think, but also for local Georgia politics. So I've been an avid listener of you guys. I think you guys are doing a great job over the rebellion. And I love the fact that you focus on, you know, primarily, well, not primarily, I'm going to say one of the main aspects is definitely local state politics there in Georgia. And I think that's really exciting because that gives people within your your state the chance to listen to a show that's going to look at the news within each uh, within Georgia in that respective state from a libertarian or at the very least a liberty mindset and, and give them something alternative to what's been pretty much, you know, the traditional uh, left right media that's that's existed. And you're, you're giving them a breath of fresh air, you're giving them a different perspective. And, and you're, honestly doing the role of what the journalists are supposed to be doing. I mean, I mean, Shane, if, if I had a dollar for every time I listened to the rebellion where you were getting ready to, you know, just absolutely lambast some Georgia politician, <laughs> I'd be a very wealthy man. So, <laughs> so, so, I mean, what you guys are doing, you're actually doing the role of journalists and it, it's from my perspective, very refreshing to see, but what's been the feedback in Georgia? How have people responded to the rebellion and the work that you guys have been doing over there? It's, it's funny you say that about half of our listenership are, are in Georgia, half are not. Um, the goal the, the goal was to be worldwide as 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 kind of audacious that that goal is. Um, but even the things that we do specifically in Georgia. So we've talked about the speaker of the House who who has been abusing justice for for over a decade now and so forth have been some of the most popular shows inside and outside of Georgia. I think people are just uh, very refreshed by a consistent look at politics where what what wherever it is really yeah and, and and i'll tell you you know it's it's the great thing is it's not well received by the the tyrants who are in power that's that's how we know like that's that's i don't know that's that, that gives me that nice warm feeling that knows like, you're doing something right <laughs> yeah it, you know is, is when you get when when you get uh harassed by the the establishment wannabes that are sitting there just there for the photo ops where they want to take pictures with people who are holding, you know, legislative seats or, you know, justices or executives, all that political nonsense, high school theater, you know, when, when you're taken to task by those people, what they're, you know, effectively doing is just outing themselves as part of the establishment that don't know really their head from the constitution. And when, <laughs> when, when you start to see, you know, this, this political outrage, rah, get them. Like, that's a good feeling. Like it, I, you know, it, it's one of those things that I really, really welcome and to, to have, I don't know, pretty much every public official that I have know our name and <laughs> it, it and send you know private messages to people saying i can't believe you're stabbing me in the back like this like so we got the best confirmation that they're actually listening to it we had our friend matt gertler who's a local state rep here just a liberty hero like the, the local ron paul and uh, he, he came great on interview the, yeah, yeah he came on the episode twice and i didn't we had our usual listenership it was a little higher than usual and over the next like week matt is like uh yeah, there's a uh, this these like ten state reps who asked me why why I said this why I said that and and there's this one state rep who said that uh that 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 you said something wrong Banks and then there's and and they've all been coming to me and asking me and wondering and prodding and I was like oh there's a political fatwa on Matt's head that's kind of yeah. cool <laughs> yeah we get we get called by you know people who are out there who are in the media complaining about our show which I think I find absolutely you know, hysterical for one thing, like, why are you calling me and complaining about our show? Like if, if you just do it on your show, we don't care. Like, I mean, that that's, I, I have, I, I, I'm probably a little too uh, fancy free for banks sometimes. And I, 
I tr- I try to kind of watch my P's and Q's a little more than if he, he makes me a better a better person, and and, I'll, and I'm happy <laughs> to admit that um, because you know when you when you're dealing with people who are this outrageous, it is it's all I can do to 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 make sure that whatever it takes to create better culture with banks, uh, you know, hosting the show, that's what I've got to do. And I don't know. It, it's, it's been s- such a fun ride, you know, almost a year in that. I, I mean, I, I can't imagine not doing this. I, I, I can't, I, I imagine all the time doing this five days a week and, and really just having a, a great time and, and an amazing guest on the show. So you, you mentioned the reception from the the greater political establishment in Georgia, which it sounds like, you know, they don't like the fact that there's actually somebody calling them out. But what's been the reception from the the average everyday citizen who listens to your show? I mean, you mentioned half of your listeners are are in the state of Georgia alone. So what's been the, the feedback that you received from you know your average everyday citizen there um, from you guys actually holding these these politicians feet to the fire? We should tell them the uh, the Justin Lancaster um, story. You, you go ahead. Yeah. So this one guy who will listen to, to the show, his name is Justin. And, um, I, I wasn't ready to, to have these kind of, he, he sent us emails and, and, and he tells us that he listens to, to us while he's working out. Um, that, that is the goal of his already to work out and, and get stronger. And that the encouragement that, that, that he's having is to listen to Shane and I, and just come to do a 180 completely on on the on how he sees politics not not only politics but his but his own his own lifestyle you know to 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 take a guy you know that has I don't know, some crazy amount of weight that he had already lost and he has a a much more ambitious goal to even lose more that's out there working his butt off changing you know not only what he's you know digesting politically but for his own body and taking charge of his life to to come from being i think he was a, a liberal and to to say that hey man i'm starting to finally see this for myself that's and asking asking questions to us of, of he's like well okay i i, I want to get a permit for for a gun but i kind of don't want to do that because that's a violation of the second amendment can can you guys elaborate on the show and we did a whole show on that yeah. and we there have been at least a good third of the shows that have been completed completely di- directed just by by listeners saying hey could you talk about this i've got a question i don't understand and, XYZ. And, and to piggyback on banks, what banks is saying, you know, to this one specific case, but I think generally what I see is that I see inquisitiveness and that that is a measure of success. If you if you want to take out the yardstick and, and, and try to measure, you know, how you're doing with something where you're trying to affect culture publicly, you know, when people are coming to you asking questions about, OK, I'm trying to square this in my head. And a lot of times, you know, when when we get down to those bedrock principles that we preach here on the show is peace, liberty, and free markets. If if you start with those principles, and now they're trying to square something in, in the political scene with those principles that's not congruent, that's usually when we get those questions. And you can sit there and say, "Hey, man, if this is if this is the principle, then it this has to be." You know where you go with either policy or law or the lack thereof, uh, and also who you're supporting. Because you know when when we look at things, it's not it's not about uh, you know politicians. It's not about parties. It's 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 not about personality or any of that other crap that's out there. It's all right. What are these people doing to create more individual liberty for everybody? And that that inquisitive nature that they come back to us with to ask those questions. I mean, we just wrapped a show with listener questions, and I think it was probably one of our best shows yet. Like I, I the, the energy was high to to sit here and and to serve our audience with things you know that we think what a what a blessing to to mm. be able to do that. I mean, I had one of my uh, my uh, guests on my show, and he was a democratic socialist. And the reason I had him on my show was because a lot of people in my audience who find themselves more towards the middle of the road, um, they were saying, well, listen, I, I've been listening to your show for a while. I know you're more libertarian, um, but I, I see a lot of my friends who are democratic socialists. And I'm trying to reconcile the differences between libertarianism and democratic socialism. And I'm just trying to objectively analyze which one is fundamentally better, not only just from a, a true objective standpoint, but also just 
hearing the, the two sides talk against each other, not necessarily talk against each other, but just discuss it in a different way and to see which one holds more merit. And, um, you know, I, with that kind of question, I was like, sure, I'm going to have my friend Keith Rubino on the show. You know, he, he's a great guy. I, I get along with him personally. You know, he's a, he's a nice person. I just think he's wrong about a lot of issues. And I had him on my show and, you know, we just had this conversation. I said, all right, well, well, Keith, you know, let's talk about $15 minute, uh, minimum wage. Let's talk about, um, oh, goodness. I think we talked about Amazon's taxes. I mean, we went through a, a litany of things and I actually asked my audience to submit questions for things they wanted to ask. And, and that same person who had originally said, Hey, can, can we, can you try to get somebody on your show? Who's a democratic socialist? They messaged back and saying that episode, like that was the episode that, that, help me decide, okay, I, I'm not a democratic socialist. I'm not sure if I'm a libertarian yet, but I just noticed listening to you talk to Keith that like the, the merits of democratic socialism, when, when they're questioned, they can't stand up on their own. So to, to hear, you know, you're having the same reception that I've had is exciting because that tells me that there's a lot of people out there who are really excited and curious about what this whole liberty movement or just, you know, the small L libertarian idea and, and principles are. So to see people asking you guys or, or to see people reaching out to me, it, it gets me excited. It makes me want to do more of these episodes because I, I feel that we're actually, like you guys said, making a difference and changing culture. Absolutely. It's it's funny you say talk against the your, your first term there, because that's what Shane would say during the campaign. He's like the mainstream media, for the most part, what it seems to be doing is giving you this ammo every day to go out and talk against your uh, your your neighbors instead of finding all the common ground. And I think that our standards are so low like this. This is a recurring thing on on the show. Like our standards are so low that we're impressed by 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 so little that there is so much com there is so much common ground out there sometimes it's just the very simple thing sometimes it's just the well what's what's the empathetic view of this like we we can understand what what human beings are 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 going through we're, we're all human beings um so the fact that the standard is so low and and the fact that instead of doing like the mainstream media which is just pitting one against the other and sensationalism and keeping the volume at at 100 all the time we're just talking with and trying to understand other human beings and and pointing the target to to really who is the enemy which is a big all-encompassing government Collective. instead of our neighbors yeah and, and you you asked the kind of the, the a pertinent question within there in that statement too is you know in in terms of you know the democratic socialists coming to the table the the liberty movement whether it's you know, small L or, you know, Republican or what, what, whatever the, I don't know, whatever the box we're trying to keep people in. Um, it's for me, one of the telltale tail signs of when you are having these discussions that are with people who, you know, vastly disagree with you is who will on the other, you know, who will tell you that even when the ideal society that they have, that, that they imagine, you know, this, this utopia of either democratic socialism or, you know, a, a very almost anarchy type society, minarchy, anarchy, whatever you want to say, who's going to tell you out of those groups that there are going to be problems still, but those problems that are, th those problems that are associated with a free society of, you know, without coercion, without force and government and, and nonsense are much more desirable than those that are created by too much force of an overbearing tyrannical government. What a segue. It's like you knew what I was going to talk about because one of the things I want to talk about was the culture and to talk about how people um, how, how people have, have kind of diluted the conversations to very basic platitudes. And we look at people like Joe Rogan, who I think is doing you know God's work and having people from all across the political spectrum on to discuss these issues. And uh, you know he had Tulsi Gabber on his show just yesterday. I think it was yesterday at least. Yep. Um, and it was it was a, a fascinating conversation, not because I agree with Tulsi, uh, agree with Tulsi, but because they had a conversation that there was no you know, heated exchange. It was literally him asking her questions to explain her positions. I mean, how many times has Tulsi been you know called a, a pro Assad, uh, you know, pro Assad? What, what do I call her? Genocidal maniac? Um, you know, she's in favor of, of his you know, hurting his 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 own people, and and it's like no, that's not exactly, and that's not at all what what Tulsi Gabbard believes. Um, she's much more in the the Ron Paul you know libertarian camp when it comes to foreign policy, just non interventionism. Um, but the, the the discussion about that has kind of been you know withered away 
because we were promoted uh, throughout the entire you know news cycle that you know oh if you're anti uh, intervention in Syria you well that means you're pro Assad and you're anti. Uh, Syrian refugee. And, and this also kind of couples along with the way that people approach, um, you know, $15 minimum wage or tariffs or you name whatever the, the the position that's being discussed of the day is, is that there seems to be a lot less intellectual conversation and deep, well thought out conversations and more of these, you know, hot button, what's going to get the, the sensationalist headline there at the, at the top of the page that's going to get clicks or it's going to get people to buy papers. So, the long so that entire train of thought the question to you guys is what do you think we should do is, is it going the route of a joe rogan and having people on that we disagree with to have these long thought out conversations or, or discussions or is it something that we can you know utilize the method that's been pro- uh, brought up by the mainstream media of these sensational headlines to then kind of i, I guess like throw in libertarian or liberty uh, headlines that will will engage clicks and hopefully get people to read further in an article. What do you guys think is the answer to actually help change the culture? Well, what's interesting is um, in, in my naive days of, of politics, I was just following what Ron Paul's campaign was doing. And I thought that there was, I just followed what there was like, okay, we need to get delegates. And I would get really, really frustrated with anybody who wasn't as involved as I was. I was like, hey, you can just come and be a delegate too. But I think the answer is there's tons of ways that we should all be doing potentially some of the same things and lot of, lots of different things. I, I think we should steer away from the sensationalism and so forth and just be ourselves as much as humanly possible. Um, I think that's what Joe Rogan uh, communicates so well is that you can tell that he's a nice guy who actually cares, even though he's wrong on public education and lots of other things. And I think if you can communicate to people that you are a caring person, like the most important things to people is not um, like the like the details of free market capitalism or the details of, of Marxist communism, it's that the vast majority of people agree on the vast majority of things, that they just want to live their lives, provide for their families, and be happy. And uh, that might sound a little corny, but I think that's how you bring thing, bring people together on top of being consistent. And But that has... M- that, that can play out in much different ways. You can have people who have long-form conversation. You can have people who fo- focus more on the economics, more on the war. Um, but the, the underpinning is being consistent and focusing on what the vast majority of people agree on. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, when, when you ask the question, how do we best affect culture? I mean, we got to look at how many different facets of culture there there are. And Banks and I were just talking about this the what what we've kind of been i don't know indoctrinated with since since i can remember i don't remember it so much in the 80s um or early part of the 1990s but starting towards the mid 1990s and and on i remember shows uh like hannity and combs crossfire maddow where these people just got together bill o'reilly they got together and they yelled at each other i mean it, you know, you, you grew up, you know, saying, don't watch WWF because it'll rot your mind. Well, those same parents that were telling their kids not to watch WWF because it'll rot their minds are sitting there tuning in to mainstream media at the time. And I know we didn't have the, the mass, uh, you know, the internet and, and resources that we have today. But we definitely weren't also, you know, pushing books like Boss Yachts the Law or, you know, the, you know Ron Paul's uh, uh you know, books or things that really provoked deep introspection into the American culture and and what we are. So first and foremost, I I think if you can spread a message, turn off mainstream propaganda, because that's our MO in other countries. You know, as a Marine, you're sitting there going, we use this type of device and this mechanism to divide people on all fault lines that we can whenever we invade a country, first and foremost. So don't let them use it against you. And the, and the second thing is, is we've got to learn how to communicate with each other. And it, it's basically, it's, it's a lost art these days, for God's sakes. It's, it's not about being you know right or wrong or winners and losers. It's about just talking. It's about, you know, going into a conversation with an open mind, with a set of beliefs and principles, and to see if they hold up if, you know, when when you're having these conversations with whoever you're having those conversations with. I mean, the best thing that can happen in a conversation is you can learn something. 
that it's it's not that you're going to walk away from that you know with somebody going and, and declaring victory over you what that other person wants is to, for you to also have something in common with them in the way that they see the world that's that's a big thing and and to to get back to my you know my my first statement here is you know it's not just politics you look at you know the, the state of you know rock and roll i just went to this amazing concert by you know Greta Van Fleet awesome concert these guys are talking about peace um you know the, the, whether it's rock and roll whether it's art in in other forms um whether it's comedy you you name it there are a million things out there that we need to address as people who are in the liberty movement to try to incorporate all sides of this thing so that we are pushing on culture at every absolute angle that we can <laughs> it's funny because literally the episode before you guys, I interviewed Matt Kibbe, Um, and it was great to have Matt back on the show. And he discussed this very thing. I mean, one of the things that he does over at free the people is he tries to approach it from a, a cultural perspective. And, and I was actually telling him how uh, I have a lot of lefty friends who they look at Republicans or libertarians and conservatives as these anti-environmentalist zealots. And I said, well, here, I'm going to show you this great documentary called off the grid with uh, Thomas Massey, who happens to be a staunch libertarian conservative Republican in Congress who happens to just live entirely off the grid. He's entirely self-sufficient. He he has his, his own water source. He has his own power source. Um, he uses his own land for, for the trees and the rocks to build his house. And one of my friends messaged me back and they're like, oh my God, this this actually like impacted my way I look at other people. And it's just, it's, it's funny that you literally just mentioned that as we are coming off an episode with that. Um, but it's funny, Banks, you, you mentioned something, and, and actually I think Shane, you mentioned it too, is discussing these um, old mainstream media outlets. And it, whenever I talk to somebody who is over the age of 45, 50, I almost always find them parroting back the talking points that are being you know, either discussed over on CNN or on Fox News. And it's funny, I can actually like almost guarantee I can pick what organization it was based on the talking point they're yeah. presenting. <laughs> uh, I mean, one of my one of my family friends from up north, um, they started talking about um, the basically it's economic populism. And I'm like, oh, did you watch Tucker Carlson the other night? And they're like, oh, yeah, Tucker had a great discussion about this. I'm like, I see. Um, but uh, <laughs> then the question I have is, well, I look at people who are more in the millennial, we'll say, range under the age of, we'll say, 40. And they, they don't get their their news mostly from the, the mainstream media. It's mostly from online sources of, of information, be it uh, online publications, their, their friends on social media, what have you. But conversely, those people seem to be more ingrained in their own political views, be it far left or far right. So are we substituting the old mainstream media that just pretty much indoctrinated people with a new form of media that just it it really reaffirms our own confirmation biases and pulls us further apart. So I I think that his, the, the the best way of, of predicting the future um, is looking at history and you're definitely going to have um, in in lots of ways a repetition of, of, of what are, what has already happened. Sensationalism works for a reason, right? It's it's loud and and, and loudness gets our attention. But um, I think the the optimism one can see is that there's the barrier to entry to spread your ideas is is as low as it's ever been in human history. And so us who understand free markets and and competition at one point, even if it looks kind of defeatist, like, yeah, a, a lot of the leftists and a lot of people on on the right um, might seem, but there are going to be consequences to the bad ideas that that I think they hold. And when when the consequences explode, when when, when those bubbles explode, and and there's just too much cognitive dissonance going on there, uh, because at some point when you're just following the, the the party line, and the party line just attacks the other side for whatever reason without seeing the, their own hypocrisy, people either drop out of politics or they see the light. And with all the competition, that that's why Shane, Shane and I and you we're only like small cogs in the wheel. But as much volume as the liberty movement occupies. We will be there to catch people when uh, when the consequences arise. Yeah, and and it's funny. I, I don't think that you know generationally there are there are outliers on every side, um, but you do find that this generation tends to get its news 
uh, through its news feeds, uh, you know, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or or whatever it is, that, that they are actually searching things out. And I think in, in terms of searching things out, you are actually exposed to a, to a plethora of different ideas that are out there. The cool thing is, is now that you, you know, you've taken enough red pills and you, you've developed a, uh, you know, a set of principles and a premise that you can now see exactly how those different types of news sources that are out there will manipulate. And we, you know, we don't ever, you know, we don't claim to be non-biased. God, we're biased. Yeah, we're, we're completely biased for the individual and, you know, against the collective, against the state and everything else. And so we, we see it in that way, you know, in, in, until I find an argument or a, a, a proof of concept to the, to the <clears throat> opposite, I, I, I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to just change my, my tune just because somebody on, you know, Fox news or MSNBC says, Oh, here's a bullet point tonight. Well, you know, the, the problem with bullet points is over the years, you can go back and you can just see, you know, how, you know, when, when Fox news went after, you know, uh, Obama day after day, after day, after day, asking questions of, of his presidency, of his, you know, of, of his birth and, and it, anything that they could ask questions on, if they applied the same questions to, to Donald Trump, no, they haven't. And the same thing <laughs> is true, true with the other side. You know, that doesn't change. You know, this, this, this is a consistency that is built over, you know, I, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years, if not a thousand years going all the way back to, you know, the, the understandings of, you know, the, the Roman empire and when, uh, that you know, the, really, England and Angolan came online. You know, back in like 1064. This this is not something that would just appear. This is you know, lots of study, lots of you know, lots of going back into uh, history and, and starting from you know so much further back for consistency than mainstream media will ever educate you on. I mean, that's there's an indoctrination process for a reason. So we talked about where we are now and how we got here. So let's wrap up as we get towards the end of the show. Where where are we going in the future? I mean, where where do we see the culture going in into? I'll say, dare say this. Let's let's say into 2020, especially with the election coming up here uh, between Donald Trump and the Democratic nominee. Where are we going as a society? Are are we going towards more of the the liberty uh, perspective, or are we starting to fall more towards democratic socialism? So, uh, yeah, w- where do you guys see the the overall culture of America from twenty twenty and beyond? I think if if we believe in truth and we have we have any grasp on on what it is, and I think we the the, the liberty movement has some kind of grasp in the very long term. I think we're going in the right direction. Uh, what's dangerous is 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 to be too too reactionary and react to just what's what's ahead. It could get worse uh, before it gets better. Um, I think there's a lot of places in other countries that are good uh, examples of how it could get worse. Uh, but that could lead to good things. For example, um, what's happening in China with the social scores and so, and so, and social credit is just, I mean, it scares the hell out of me. And if we go in that direction, there's there's certainly the uh, the framework to go in that direction uh, here here in the states one day potentially. It's already behind the but scenes. But even if we go in that direction, that could just be a setback to propulse us further towards liberty yeah. because that might be the most um, universal. Thing that I have heard people say they're scared of people who don't care about politics whatsoever. They they think it's disgusting and they're 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 apolitical. They hear about that in China and they get passionate. So I think that um, it's it's why we have to be humble and and realize that one person, even a whole group of people, can't necessarily change things in the in the short run. But in the long run, if we're consistent, it's just like playing a hand of poker. If you keep to one strategy and that strategy is pretty good. You can win if you keep on that strategy. But if you change up all the time, then you could get the the worst part of every strategy. So just being consistent, realizing that that uh, what you might not realize the effect that you're having, but that in the long run, um, espousing the uh, the ideas of liberty um, is going to save humanity. Yeah, I, I, and I I think uh, that consistency that Banks talks about is all echo. You know is. When, when people are really trying to make heads and tails of what's going on, where this country is going, uh, they see a lot of inconsistency right now out of the duopoly that's out there. And so the liberty movement, you know, if it can be consistent, if it can, 
if it can put out some really serious people to to lead this movement and I, and I think you're seeing I think you're seeing this decentralization of power through communication you know look at look at this uh, to, you know just for proof of concept you when you when you see that decentralization of power and communication and and you know amazing little nuggets and shows like this you're you're going to see people be attracted to those things because it's stable it is something that they can depend on when in, in an ever-changing world and as in as much as humans hate change you know they it's, it's also inevitable so if they can latch on to something that at least at least allows for their worldview to be recognized so that they can do what they want to do, they can be who they want to be and not be molested by force. I think there is something to that. But I also think, you know, you know, not to ignore reality, Brian, is that when you ask the question, are we going more democratic socialist? Are we, are we going more like Christian conservative? The answer is yes, both of them. <laughs> that, and, and I, and I do mean that, you know, it's, and that's, that's one of the things that scares the hell out of me, you know, and, you know, th there might be some places of, of turmoil and uh, you look at 2020, you know, I, I who knows, you know, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to be a, a soothsayer and predict the, the, the palm or the tea leaves here. Like it, you know, Trump has a very good opportunity right now of, of winning this thing. I, I don't know how Democrats are going to react to that in between, you know, after, you know, uh, the first four years. You know, they're, you know, stolen elections. Is he going to be on the ballot in some states for tax returns and not, you know, not submitting those things? There, there, there are a lot of questions I have. And the problem is, is these two groups right now are seething, man. It is, you, you've got a, a very polarized minority in America. That minority, you know, with less than 20% of this country is either Democrat and 20% Republican. So, you know, roughly 40% of the people kind of identify with the duopoly system, but that, that that's a shrinking number every day, you know, but the problem is, is they're, they're hot right now. Uh, there is already violence that started. And when, and if this thing escalates, you could see possible pockets of violence. And, you know, the, 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 the neat thing is going to be is where are we as, the, you know, the, the preachers of liberty going to be during that time trying to, to, to quiet this, to try to be the resolution, to, to, try, to, to present that message that, you know, hey, listen, you know, you can go over here and do your democratic <laughs> socialist stuff. You know, just don't hurt anybody. Don't take their stuff. And you guys over there in the Christian conservative moment, you can go over there and do whatever stuff you want. Same thing applies. Don't hurt people. Don't take their stuff. And definitely don't use the force of government because your imagination is too damn small to come up with a resolution uh, to what societal problems are. Let the free market work this stuff out. That's, I mean, that, that, that's, that's where I think we're headed. The podcast is The Rebellion with Banks and Shane. You can find it where pretty much any podcasts are found. Uh, I know that they are always the top of my podcast feed. and I've, I love listening to them every week. Um, but for folks who want to go beyond the podcast, where can they find you guys over on social media? So we have a, a website. It's rebellionpod.com. There's all the links to the social media. On social media, we're at rebellionpod. You can find awesome. uh, you can find Banks. He needs followers. Go out there and follow him. F Banks Wise at on Twitter. He's he's got a he's got a growing uh, following out there. And uh, I'm mostly on Facebook. Twitter's trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I think Twitter's trying to kill everybody. Well, <laughs> well, listen, guys. I, I I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show today. Uh, I know you are all very, very busy men, especially with uh, your own show of your, your own that, that definitely takes up a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, but with that, again, thank you dearly for coming on the show. You guys are doing exactly what we need to do. And uh, I, I know you guys are actually making an impact. It's so exciting to see. So keep doing what you're doing. Uh, this this is honestly how we change the future. And the more of us that are doing this, the better. Uh, we're we're going to make the, the, the minds and the hearts all change. And I'm excited to see where we, uh, we end up. So, uh, uh, with that, folks, thank you so much for joining us today on The Brian Nichols Show. Yes, another fun-filled episode. Uh, and as always, please feel free to go ahead and follow me over on social media and on Facebook at B Nichols Liberty. And uh, if you could, folks, go ahead and share today's episode with your families and friends. Also, head over to iTunes. Give us a rate and review. That's how we move up the rankings. And as always, I always will go ahead and uh, read those reviews here on The Brian Nichols Show. So with that, 
Brian Nichols signing off here on The Brian Nichols Show for Banks and Shane of The Rebellion. We'll see you next week. Well, that was Brian Nichols, and you can find him on The Brian Nichols Show. He is on pretty much every major app you could possibly think of when it uh, when it comes to podcasting, just like The Rebellion. And uh, I don't know. I had a lot of fun, man. Uh, he is definitely one of those guys uh, that is just – his his excitement is contagious. I, I like to string of questions. It kind of um, – it challenged me to think about – things that I already think about, like what's our place, what's our goal, what what makes us different as, as a podcast. Um, but I might have not been thinking about it enough because I was giving him answers, but in the back of my head, my, my brain was just like... I, so so what, were you, what were some of your thoughts there in, in Deep Banks AI? Well, I, I said one of them. I said, like, you have to remain humble. Um, I think that yeah. sometimes in all aspects of life, you can lose... What's the word? Um you can lose traction by by going too fast and not being patient. Yeah. And 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 the right and and that can cost you your your goal, right? If you're if you're doing podcasts and and you're like I'm not big enough, uh, I don't have enough reach, I'm just one of every, uh, of any podcast out there that's about liberty, which you could say like I like I'd like to grow faster. Um, there are a bunch of liberty podcasts out there. Yeah. But what underpins like my my motivation to go forward. First thing, it's fun. Like I like doing this. It's so okay. much. Yeah. Like I laugh a lot. Laughing is good for your health. Um, it's fun to hang out with a friend. It's therapeutic. Uh, our patron, our patrons, and just supporters are the coolest people ever. I can't wait to do like an in-person thing. Um, but the second thing is is the very humble, kind of logical, analytical um, value to this. It's if we can affect, and I try to do this in, in any aspect of life. If I can affect one person in a in even a smaller but hopefully like a consequential way like i one person who was and this is a little bit um dramatic maybe but i think if you're not in line with liberty right um the the really underpinnings of of liberty i think you're at least to some degree unhappy so i i, I want people to to be happy so if yeah. i can change one person's life from envious angry bitter statism of 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 whatever sort youtube and, commenters yeah <laughs> god rah, just, just and, anger and i can bring those people to yeah. to the beauty that i think li liberty is and going super super corny here yeah all the potential how uh, other human beings are not your enemy uh they're not even your competition there is just massive wealth and opportunity and prosperity out there for everybody um then that's worth it one person and if you if you keep that in the back of your head and you realize that you've done it before this i mean that's kind of not that humble like i have changed somebody's life since i've been involved in politics i've had a few people not i'm not talking hundreds but i've had a few people tell me i have changed their life yeah which is a weird thing okay like i i've had other people change my life like i i told ron paul i think the first time i met him um which is on video on CNN, you can see my hand and hear my voice. Change my life, Ron Paul. <laughs> I was crying. You can't see that. Um, then probably not even through that hair that you used to have. <laughs> you guys should. Oh man, I. I if no, I can, you cannot see if that. If I can ever smuggle Banks's uh, driver's license picture, I will, <laughs> I, I will do it. <laughs> it is. What, I look like a terrorist and a hippie at the same time. Yeah, it, it is. It is great fun. I mean, the the first time you showed me that, I was like, "Whoa, who's that guy?" You haven't seen my old passport photo. I, I that I, one is literally a week after I cut my long hair myself. I had I had hair to my shoulders. What? And, and I cut it myself. I'm so envy. I I was never one of those guys that has ever had hair down to my shoulders. Like when I was a little kid, I had one of those like 1980s shaggy cuts. You know, where you when your hair is just dead straight. And this is everywhere, and it looks like a bowl because that's what they they put on your head to cut your hair. <laughs> like, that's what my hair looked like. That was as long as it ever got. So, definitely envious of your wavy locks. Oh, I'm losing it slowly. But, um, but yeah, if I've had people tell me that I've changed their life, um, and more people tell me that I've changed like their position on on an important issue. Yeah. Uh, on war, on death penalties, on immigration, on the death penalty. I've had a lot since, uh, we've, we, we, uh, for, since our death penalty episodes, man. I mean, we've done two death penalty episodes and I've had conservative, like right wing, you know, people that were so pro death penalty that have come out and said, you know what? 
I was wrong. That I mean, that statement for somebody to just flat out come out and say I was wrong to you, like thanks for showing, like thanks for at least presenting this different, uh, this different thought. That's cool. I've been. Uh, that's something that we need to be. I need to do a better job at making sure people know that, like, I've been totally wrong. Oh, I, 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 I used to have somebody who I who who I trust a, a, a lot make the statement of they weren't like pro pro war, but they'd be like, if we could just go and like carpet bomb Iraq and then get over with and leave, just turn it into glass. And I didn't like think the idea was the most wonderful idea, but I didn't push back that much either. I trusted the person. I was like, yeah, that seems logical. Yeah, like I was a stupid teenager. Oh man, I was totally a, wrong. I'm embarrassed of that person. I was a young adult, and like people were like, "Let's just nuke it, and turn it into a sheet of glass." I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." And man, wow! Like, like I don't think I even understood the implications of my own thoughts. You know, to to be part of a crowd that was vocal, that was you know ready to do something like that. My God, thank God nobody listened to us. You know, that's. That's a hell of a statement, man, to, to be like, man, I couldn't have been more wrong about something like that. I mean, death penalty, I was definitely one of those people that was like, yeah, yeah, let me let me inject them or throw the switch and, you know, to, to be able to sit back and say, no, no, that was that was also wrong, you idiot, Shane. Like, that's 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 a cool thing and to, to help other people know that, hey, you know, been there and, and, and we, we've, we've walked in those same shoes. And that's, I'll tell you to, to make those, to make those course corrections for what will eventually help this nation to recognize its real potential, whether the United States is here or not to, to help individuals recognize their potential to create and pass their inalienable innate, you know, gifts that they were born with to this culture and to humanity and, what a what a heavy but what a cool thing sometimes people admitting um that they were wrong is the most powerful teacher uh, the fact we've talked about him so many times on this show um he's passed away now which which just makes me really sad but uh representative walter jones yeah um from north carolina um the fact that he in in such a real way so living it out li- mm-hmm. living out his penance Never, ne- never forgetting it, taking overt actions, asking for forgiveness, and um, it, it made me a better person. For him to be a better person, like it, it makes me remember. Whoa, like to to be humble, uh, to question myself, uh, to not be arrogant. If if he can do that, if if he can be so humble and so uh, so gracious, yeah. Um, like, what what else? Have, I certainly can. What else have you been wrong? On? Maybe maybe that's the end of this podcast. Is we we, we just came into this we're like we're like on. we're just going to do this. What else have you been wrong on, man? I mean, in, in terms of I've been wrong on how I approach political activism in the very beginning. I, I was naive, and it was the whole uh, Ron Paul thing, and I was part of the campaign. I was yeah. a, I was a district coordinator here in Georgia, and um, I was not all the time, but a good amount of time um, after the the initial like learning curve and with, I would just read a bunch of stuff and meet a bunch of Ron Paul people. And then the hurrah of like having just rallies and so forth. Yeah. The years after that, even though I had the up of like my, my friend Charles Gregory uh, winning and running his campaign was just awesome and kind of by accident because we didn't know what, what we were doing after that. There's a few years where I had a lot of bitterness and anger and resentment at all the people who dropped out at, at all the people who 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 didn't do it the way that I thought like, yeah like we didn't I we, was listening to 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 the Ron Paul campaign and just to to what I I was like we just had got to do it again and you're the one causing the uh causing the failure by leaving if you had just stayed and yeah. um like it, it's not that I hated anybody but there was definitely like this festering anger and bitterness like come on guys <laughs> I, I can't do this like, by myself. I'd, I, I'd call through a phone list. Like that that's what we would do to get people like reactivated and call through a phone list and talk to them and like I like all these Ron Paul people, the vast majority, ninety nine point nine percent. And um I'd have a nice conversation with them and then they wouldn't come to a meeting. Yeah. And I wouldn't hate them, but mm. Boy. And I don't have that anymore. That's good. You you've learned to kind of just let people be people. Yeah, I think we all play a role. I think that nobody owes anybody anything but non-aggression. 
Maybe there's more, but that's not for me to judge. Um, and uh, at the very least, I think it's highly unproductive to try to force people. Yeah. So if I want the right thing to happen, the best way for me to do that is to deploy so, love and empathy and not anger and force. Set an example. Yeah. Yeah, be, be the example. Because I could do more. Boy, it's, it's amazing how that, that teaching just keeps coming through. Just be the example. <laughs> Stop forcing people. I, I, I learned a word the other day. It's um, There's a martial art in, in Japan, and instead of calling their teacher sensei, they call their teacher sibonam, which, me, which yeah. means leader by example. Yeah. Which... That's great. Yeah. Leader by, I mean, what a, what a great concept, right? Yeah. I, I, I kind of like where this thing is headed a little bit. Um, you know, and so I've already admitted, uh, my foreign policy was complete trash back in the day. Um, my, my stance on the death penalty also right there in the, in the bin with it. Um, one of the, one of the things that, I I had maybe a little more trouble with not not so much than our foreign policy that was a, that was a big one for me, but uh, here domestically was a war on drugs. Like I was on the wrong side of that, Banks. I didn't even know that. Yeah, how what, is that once freaking a, well, possible? Well, once upon a time, I grew up in the, in the South here and in you know public indoctrination where you had uh, just say no and you had dare programs and whatever other you know, thing that they could brand this with where they put people who are in, you know, uniforms with little tin badges on and they come in and they tell you, you know, your life's going to fall apart if you do drugs. And if, you know, by some chance it doesn't and we find you, we're going to tear your life apart and it's going to be bad anyway. Like that was indoctrinated in me from a very early age, you know, just say no, you know, and, and people who smoke dope are losers and not going anywhere, you know, I mean, just, just, they took the humanity out of people who had problems with substance abuse. And that, that was a hard thing for me to come to grips with because it's like, you know, like first and foremost, we're paying for it. I get it. We're paying for a lot of other things. Um, and I don't want to pay for, you know, somebody's medical bills that are you know going to be out there. That, that was part of the argument. I think that I subscribed to the other one was, well, you know, if, if they're going to make those types of life decisions that are going to put them at risk and, you know, put all of us at risk, it was like pre-crime, you know, it's like, no, man, I'm not, I don't want to be at risk because, you know, there's something, there's somebody out there. The problem is, is at that time I didn't, I wasn't, I I'd, I'd never heard the uh, argument that, hey man, whether there's laws out there or not, people are going to do things like Murderers are going to murder. You didn't learn reality Ass- in school. Assault people who will assault people and take their physical frustration or their frustration out physically are going to assault people. People will kidnap and like I I I never I had never heard that argument. And so for for me with the whole drug war, it was exactly the same thing. It was just a different you know a different set of non uh, non thinking political points that. You know, we were indoctrinated with, and as soon as you saw the light, and just kind of shed some, some real disinfectant on that kind of thought. You're just like, yeah, man, this doesn't make sense. How do I tell mom? <laughs> you know, I and mean, that's that's what it, that's basically what it got down to. Speaking of your parents, um, did you guys have a a transition towards the liberty movement kind of at the same time, or were you first, and then you kind of oh, changed no. them, or were so, they? So it was my brother. Um, your brother changed the whole family. Yeah. So my brother, why has he not been on the, so there's one episode back in December <laughs> yeah. that he was on the show with Shane. We're all busy, man. He's, but, he's, uh, I'd like to interact with him. They, they've got baseball on weekends and I feel like I know him to some degree, yeah, even I th- though I don't really know. I, I met him like twice. Same thing. I, oh, you know what I, you know what I can't do is I can't go another episode cause this is probably going to air quite a bit later. But if, uh, if mom you're listening and Meredith, you're listening. We had just celebrated Mother's Day, and I'm gonna try not to get choked up and, and cry like a little baby during this. But um, these two women in my life, there I am. I'm choked up. Um, have have done nothing but uh, support me, thick and thin, um, through some of the the craziest decisions that I've ever made um and 
man, a, a happy Mother's Day to you guys is 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 never going to be enough. You guys have you guys have helped overwhelmingly make me the the man I am. So I I. I forgot about it in the last couple episodes to say anything about Mother's Day. Probably subconsciously, I didn't want to because I knew I'd, you know, kind of tear up a little bit. But I'm, I'm keeping a tally of how many times we cry on. on I, the show. <laughs> I think you're at like three or four. I'm yeah, at like at one least. or two. And you weren't here for the Meredith episodes. Whenever she's on with me, I always get a little teary, <laughs> and uh, it's just because I, I look across the table from her and, and I, I love her so damn much. But yeah, Mom, Meredith, God, you you guys are just, you know. If if the world, if if the world had moms like you, we'd have a lot better world, for sure. I don't know him that well. I know Meredith a little at this point. Yeah, she's pretty damn cool. Yeah, they're uh, they're both pretty damn cool. You're you're a mom too. I'm not leaving her out. <sighs> I, I just don't know her as much. Yep. Um. So anyway, I thought I'd say that. Um. But I, I, we, well, I had to get that in. In terms of, in terms of other things that uh, that I've been wrong. Well, on. well, you're talking about your brother Brent being the one who changed the family. Brent, yeah. Brent, uh, sorry. Uh, Brent is one yeah. of our listeners. <laughs> It's it, it's funny. Brett and I, uh, growing up, uh, the the neighbors would call us Shet and Brain because it was Shane and Brett, but <laughs> Shet, Shet and Brain or or, or Shet for brains. And uh, with uh, you know with with other people out there, it was always Brent or Bert or Sean. You know, it was never Shane and Brett. And so now we it, it, we're quite used to it by now. I'm sure. So. He's Brent. the one, that, yeah. He he's the one that changed. Uh, he's the one that uh, was that guy that was like, "Hey, man, have you ever heard of this guy named Ron Paul?" And you know, like, seriously, your parents too. Uh yeah. And it it wasn't it wasn't so uh so, you know subtle with them. And you know, there's obviously some you know political disagreements, which which health you know healthy, right? You know, sure. it, was, it was one of those things where you know we would talk and. You're like, well, man, I just, I, 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 I gotta, I gotta make a breakthrough. And the thing is, is you know, he, he, he loved, you know, everybody so much that even when he had the disagreements, is he was still like, hey, man, you know, the, the, the whole, I, I care enough to have these conversations to break through at some point, and you know, sure enough, I mean, it's just a matter of time. Like you can only, you can only try to actively ignore the message of individual liberty for so long. And, you know, as you're constantly just, you know, I hate to say being browbeat, but you know, Brett and I are not subtle guys, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, between the two of us and we're probably about, I don't know, not, not 500 pounds, but pretty close and kind of take up a room very boisterous and you know it's when when you've got that going into you know political situations or debates or something there i don't know there's 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 a little extra advantage not to mention you know neither one of us is shy so it's just hey we're gonna speak our minds and this is you can either agree with us we love you either way but uh at the end of the day you know we're gonna continue to, to push liberty on you yeah, I'll see my I'll see a part of my family again um, in July in Japan. I will be uh, pushing, pushing some liberty, as usual. But uh, you were you were mentioning to me quite a while ago that your sister was headed here to the states. Is that still happening? Is not happening? Did I not give you the update on that? I don't think you did. <sighs> <laughs> it's the government's. Oh, damn it's the government's fault. fault. <laughs> oh, I'm not even kidding. Um, and Barry Loudermilk, you have been of no use. Yeah. I don't. I don't know why I thought you would be. Um, <laughs> so my little sister, yeah. who's twenty eight, but she's my little sister to me, um, and she's also pretty small, like yeah. five one or five two, um, is a pharmacist. Uh, she got her master's, um, I guess two years ago. She just did her PhD, and she was doing another master's because she's a crazy person. Um, with a, um, we just got a patron. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll do it at the beginning of next show. Yeah. But um, she was going to uh, confirm her last master's with a uh, an internship at the FDA. It's the government. She's a socialist. I'm not. It's not Banks's. Yeah. So she's the least socialist of my sisters. Um, she 
I mean, she's who, the who one that I, she's the one I grew up with the yeah. most. So influence, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she's she's much less socialist than 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 the others. But she was going to do an internship at the FDA. Um, not what I would have picked, but again, she's people get to decide what what they want. Um, and I was kind of excited about it because I was going to have her here in the state. She was going to come to Atlanta, cool. uh, spend two weeks. We we're going to do a road trip to a DC. Come on the show. Um, yeah, she would have come on the show. She yeah. she's done the the intro for the show once or twice. Yeah. Um, and uh, I find her accent now when she speaks English really, really cool. Um, totally biased. <laughs> don't don't listen to me. Um, but um, so I was I was excited. She was going to be like here for six months in DC. That's not that far. And uh, shortly before she was about to get her ticket, like she had looked at um, at leases and all this kind of stuff. And we, we were talking about it. I'm planning to make sure that I have time off and that I can like not work too much because because it was going to be during during session. Um, her uh the doctor there who works at the fda uh sends her an email is like it's all canceled what and i'm like and she's panicked because she's got to get another master's uh, another internship to to validate her master's uh like really soon yeah and she's they've gone through a lot of paperwork uh she gets paid for the internship through the french government it's a bunch of socialist nonsense but again not yeah. me making the decision so i'm just happy to have my sister here yet and um she is not American. She's French only. Um, long story of why that is. Um, so she's a foreigner. And um, the doctor uh, herself did not cancel the internship, but the security badges, which is done through the Department of Homeland Security and the NSA that have that run security at the FDA building um, through a decision from the head of the FDA now, who was appointed by Trump. Um, I used to know his name a few months ago when I was dealing with all this. Uh, decided that they were just going to cap the number of foreigners using air quotes. Yeah. Um, and uh, I did my best. I called Barry Loudermilk, spent uh, probably 10 hours on the phone with the FDA, another a few, hour, a few hours with the doctor, um, uh, probably five or six hours talking to people at Barry, at Barry Loudermilk's office. And uh, it was a lost cause. I tried to understand anyways. I had one conversation with an FDA, an FDA employee that I should have recorded because it was – just infuri infuriatingly interesting. Yeah. Long story short, sadly, I will not see her until Christmas. But I will see um, another one of my sisters in Japan in July. Yeah. Um, and my nephew and um, my brother-in-law. That's MAGA, man. MAGA. Keeping them foreign socialists out of out of the USA. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Like I, I think it's, it needs a little levity. I Sure. I mean, I, I hadn't thought about this for a while. It makes me like government affects people's yeah. lives on a on a real basis. Sometimes we don't necessarily see it. It def definitely affects people on a worse basis. Like there's people who are like shot and imprisoned yeah. and subjugated yep. and ton millions of people who, who have been killed in other countries. Right. Yeah. Um, but to have it. And I've my, my life has been affected one day, one day when we do more of our interviews yeah. one on one. Um, there's one story that I don't know if I can tell yet, um, but I'm I've been trying to write it down and get and, and, and get better at it. But when it affects your life personally, because we, we're self centered, there's a little bit of selfishness. Like it just there's it's a whole another level of of anger. Yeah, and I care about other people. I care when it affects other people's lives. There's worse things happening to so many other people. Sure, but um, I don't get to see my sister a lot. I she's my favorite person in the world. Man, wow, look at this episode. And, uh, <laughs> and that just makes me... Yeah, I, I get it, man. So mad. So yeah. anyways, I don't know where we've gone thank, now. Thank, thanks <laughs> you for, thank you for saving me the dump button there. I, I, I appreciate that. No, but I, I, I think this has been a good little wrap-up to a great show, man. I think uh, with the interview and everything else, a little bit of sharing, a little caring, a little uh, pointing out our own shortcomings in, in this new, world. A new patron? A new patron, man. We are we're batting for the cycle. You know what that means? What batting for the cycle? I have no idea. So is the that baseball. Yeah, it's a, it's a baseball expression. So if you get a, <laughs> I thought you didn't like baseball, dude. I used to play it. I, th I, I thought we were on the same team I here. I loved sports. Suck. Shane. I love playing baseball. Sports. Sports are the entertainment of <laughs> slaves. I'm totally kidding. I mean, I mean, we've been recording for what? Like, oh, man, it's been a day, dude. Since one o'clock, yeah. and it's like eight thirty almost. Yeah, it's a big day. It's uh four three 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 episodes three episodes yeah wow big day with all the inner inner things and prep and good stuff though some 
awesome episodes. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I. That's what we're doing, man. We are, uh, we're gonna get out there, uh, and and I think the best way to do that is to be humans and, and actually have these types of conversations. So, and one of the best ways to support the podcast is to leave us a review. We've been missing some of them. I'm in a review desert, man. I I miss I miss that uplifting, you know. It's review a review in the famine, beginning. people. It's a review <laughs> famine. We are starving for reviews. Um, so you can go on the Apple Podcast. Or on iTunes, um, so you can do that on on a uh, Windows computer too on on iTunes, or you can do it on Facebook. Yeah. Um, if you'd like to support the show and get some of our awesome stickers, uh, you can support us at patreon.com slash rebellion pod. Yeah, and uh, if you would uh, w- would just I don't know like to send us any type of info, uh, whether it's good, bad, and different, got questions so we can do more. Uh, question-based uh, type shows for our listeners. Ideas for guests. Yeah, it's info at rebellionpod.com. Uh, you can send us emails there with anything that you got. We'll take a look at it. We'll throw it into a, a giant stack, and we will get to the best ones here on the show. But this is The Rebellion. It's your place for peace, liberty, and free markets. We Go- love you. We need you. Peace. Don't hurt people and don't take their stuff.